Hello Slimy Fertlers, we're back again and I'm going to do another model making video. This time around I'm going to be doing this one, which is an Armacast, or Armafast, Armafast, yes Armafast, um, T3476. Um, basically I bought this at the same time as I bought the uh, Panzer IV uh, from the same guy. Uh, it does some quite, as I say, it does some quite nice stuff when you... Uh, you know, if you buy a few together, it uh, works out a lot more economical. And again, it's an armor fast one, so it comes in. They normally come in boxes of two. Got some lovely bubble wrap there to play with later. Uh, yeah, normally come in in boxes of two. I didn't want two T thirty four seventy sixers, uh, so you know, buy one of these. Buy the pan, uh, buy the uh, Panzer IV. Cool. So there's the uh, instructions or destructions again. Um, very simple. Hopefully, unlike the Panzer IV, I won't have to do as much guesswork. So we'll just start, I'll start by having a look at kit. Uh, so look here, armor fast. Uh, oh, this kit can be used, uh, or, or this base uh, basic thing can be used as an SU-35, oh no, SU-85, T-34, or SU-100. Uh, armor fast, made in England, 2007. So yeah, you can use the basic tub and then the, the body part to make uh, that. So yeah, so let's start clipping and uh, yeah, so we'll take off the tub first. I don't want this video to go on as long as the uh, as long as the Panzer IV video did because uh, I got rattling away a bit too much on that one with technical details and stuff. So. I'll try not to do that with this one. It's just I like talking about tanks. I, I really like tanks. Um, but yeah, so uh, a bit of bit of stuff history. Um, one of the things that the uh, Germans did uh, during the Second World War was they engaged in something called Operation Barbarossa, which was a really well thought out practical idea to invade the Soviet Union during winter. Uh, and the uh, at first the the Germans were doing quite well. They kind of took the Russians by surprise, which isn't surprising really, considering that uh, they'd actually signed a deal with Stalin to uh, you know not invade the Soviet Union. Uh, but then old mad old Uncle Adolf decided that uh, he was going to invade the Soviet Union anyway, and he did. And that basically was pretty much the, the end of the Nazis because they kind of got a uh, bit off a bit more the Jew with attacking the uh, the Soviet bear and uh, by the time they realised what happened they'd had their asses kicked and one of the reasons they got their asses kicked was due to the T-34 which when Operation Barbaros first started um, there weren't actually any T-34s and the Soviets were still relying on sort of stuff that had been designed kind of in the early 30s, well the late 20s to the early 30s and uh, those type of tanks were still kind of World War I um, era vehicles uh, pretty crap by you know the kind of modern standards and uh, let me just have a look here, oh yeah and once again we've got a, a thing where the the instructions don't actually match the parts <laughs> it's just so yep so it's a bit of a guess game yep so um the t oh shit box my needles come off uh yeah the t-34s uh were mass produced tanks and they were the idea behind them came quickly uh, one of the things that they did without realizing was the inclusion of sloped armor as we can see here on the top hull of the tank the front of the tank is sloped whereas on you you know your average German bottle tank like the Panzer III or the Panzer IV um, they're flat they're you know they're basically flat surfaces and uh, they didn't realize it at the time but the kind of sloped armor thing they sort of figured it out yeah it's the Germans figured it out after the Russians um, because they uh, incorporated sloped armor designs onto things like the Panther and one of the uh, things that uh, the T-34s did quite well is that A there were a lot of them because they were very very simple tanks to build 
you know, they were very very simple tanks to build so the factories that were before the war were making tractors and combine harvesters and things like that could quickly be switched over to making um, parts and, and armor plates and stuff like that for tanks so when they realized when the Soviets realized that things like T70 well T60s T70s you know little fast tanks and uh, forgot what the other things were there were great huge great hulking things that looked like something that they'd literally got out of a museum from World War I um, when they realised that, that those weren't cutting the, cutting the mustard against the, the old uh, panzers they started rushing these out now people say that the T-34 is one of the best tanks of the war and it was it was innovative and uh, sounds strange to say that in relation to um, Soviet technology but yes it was very innovative it was very simple and uh, it was quite easily mass-produced well, thing is though they didn't get it quite right and the actual T-34 went through a lot of changes during the war you know it, you'd be surprised at how many changes why doesn't that line up You'd be surprised how many changes the T-34 went through during the during the actual war itself. You know, considering that towards the end of the war, supply uh, you know supplies of metals and things like that were uh, running out. Uh, but one thing that uh, the T-34-85 is usually the tank that is is you know meant to be talked about when you're discussing. T-34s. Now the T-34-85 came after the T-34-76 and I, I already have a, a T-34-85 and it made numerous improvements that basically made what was already a fairly decent tank even better such as uh, having a place on the top of the turret for the commander to look out of without getting his head blown off um, and it also had a bigger bigger and more powerful gun uh, which you know if you've got a a bigger and more powerful gun you're more likely to be able to you know blow up German tanks um, the Russians uh, with their battle tanks they didn't go for the old uh, they didn't really go in for the the kind of what they call although they they did in, in many effects copy British and French uh, tank strategy um, in so far as they had sort of fast light fast tanks um, and slow you know light fast tanks acted as cavalry tanks which were you know basically meant to zip in fast start shooting at things blowing things up and then the slower infantry tanks would follow along with the uh, the, the foot infantry and things like that and that's sort of the, the thing that they were doing you know when the Germans invaded you know they had, like I said they had the T-70s and whatever um, but the Germans kind of adopted the more modern um, thing of having what they, what we would now refer to as a main battle tank and uh, yeah the Russians kind of cottoned on to this and thought well hang on a minute if we have these things that are pretty much dedicated towards um, you know taking out enemy tanks then we can leave off with you know things like assault guns and stuff like that for you know providing assistance to you know to the men uh, assault guns were much much more useful uh, as infantry support things than they were at taking out tanks although that said a lot of uh, infantry support assault guns uh, did also act as tank destroyers um, it's just that tanks were a lot more mobile and could get in and move around whereas tank destroyers with the kind of fixed gun on the front of the hull you know like the the old-fashioned assault gun layout uh, they were not so good uh, at doing that because you know you had to make the keep the tank still uh, you know or you had to keep the vehicle still cause it wasn't a tank uh, keep the vehicle still line up your target fire and as soon as you fired because usually assault guns would have a much bigger bigger gun and therefore would um, you know give their position away you either had to hope that nobody spotted you when you fired or you had to scoot uh, basically do the old shoot and scoot thing and uh, you know it worked you know if you get enough tank destroyers together you could uh, 
smash through uh, a load of enemy a load of enemy tanks um, quickly and they wouldn't know what hit them but it was a lot easier to do with tanks because tanks were much more mobile they by and large you know shoot on the move stuff like that so yeah and the tanks were also good for holding positions against infantry although you would be uh, crazy to do so especially against Russian infantry because Russian infantry had a thing for throwing petrol bombs at tanks and attaching magnetic mines to tanks and stuff like that which is one of the reasons why the um, Panzer 4 Panzer 4 H uh, was fitted with Zimmerit as standard because magnetic mines won't stick to Zimmerit so the uh, you know that, that kind of you know, negated the magnetic mine thing, but uh, still, it's not nice to get uh, some Russian peasant farmer or whatever it is running up to your nice shiny big tank and cobbing a bottle of what's basically petrol, burning petrol at you. And uh, you know, so there we are. Uh, that won't go in there. So yeah, the body's done. Well, body, the basic body's done. Very simple. Now I'm just assembling the. Uh, turret which is also nice and simple like I say this was a simple tank to build in factories and it's a nice simple build to do as well I'm going off camera but that that's the gun just give it a minute there to stick on there we go and that goes through there or rather it doesn't because the hole's not wide enough so I just force the fucker through uh, might need to trim a little bit of that off unless I can so one of the good things about poly cement is that it melts plastic on contact which is how it forms a nice strong bond and sometimes if you have a connector hole that's a little bit contrary and won't accept the piece you're trying to go in just putting a little bit of poly cement on it giving it a minute will make it melt through the plastic or will soften the plastic up and allow you just to push it through. So that's the turret nearly done, all I need to do now is just the top plate, clip, clip. Yeah. but yeah the, uh, the, the T-34 was a bit of a surprise for the Germans because they were really surprised how a country with such a kind of poor level of industrial skill could produce something so fast so quickly and that was so effective um, it's one of the kind of national characteristics of Russians that they are brutally logical and simple um, I mean that even goes right through to you know sort of Cold War era Soviet Union um, where they try and keep all of their weapons and stuff as simple and uh, simple to operate and as cheap to make as possible um, so that they can have lots of them. It's uh, there's a quote often attributed to Stalin uh, that says that uh, you know quantity is a quality all of its own. And in the case of the T34, that was bang on because there were a lot more T34s than there were Panzer IVs or Panthers or even Tiger tanks. <coughs> and uh, that was one of the reasons why the uh, the Nazis got sent running back to yeah, why well, the Nazis got running sent running back to Germany was because basically the there were too many Russians for them to kill. And uh, you know, those Russians uh, had more tanks, so I mean other things as well, such as the really you know, like the Siege of Stalingrad really bogged the Germans down for a while and everybody started running out of stuff and obviously, you know, the Russians can keep stuff coming from their own factories and things like that. Uh, well, basically any factories that haven't been bombed into oblivion by the, the Luftwaffe. Uh, but also, uh, places that weren't currently under attack could also make things. They had millions upon millions of people, well, millions and millions of, of young men to conscript into the, the military. And, uh, you know, although, you know, like I said, at the start of the Second World War, the Russians weren't really interested in fighting it, and uh, they weren't really, really, you know, properly prepared 
to fight such a big war under such circumstances uh, but at the end uh, when uh, Uncle Adolf decided that he was going to go and have a crack at it um, they kind of, like I said, they, the Russians sort of took a, a, a bit of a knock at the beginning of the war and then got everything moving um, because it, it, it's literally that part of the war was was more a clash of personalities you know it's Stalin had come to this agreement with Hitler and uh, you know and the understanding that you know the Germans wouldn't attack Russia and then you know Russia wouldn't attack the Germans but then the Germans went and the Germans went against that and so old Stalin's nose got put out of joint and uh, it basically became a, a massive dick waving competition so yeah, so the T-3476 came before the T-3485, it made improvements on the previous model, um, I can't, yeah, off the top of my head I can't remember which model the T-76 the replaced, uh, but it certainly was better. Uh, a lot of refinements made to the T-34s over the course of the war were down to things like uh, you know, simplifying construction elements, putting on better guns, making bigger turrets and things like that, you know, because obviously the bigger the gun, the bigger the turret needs to be, and having a tiny little turret isn't going to let you put on something like this, which is a, uh, I think this is actually a 76mm gun. You, know, you put a 76mm gun on and it becomes a lot better. It's like I said, the, the sort of standard tank gun for nearly everybody at the beginning of the war was the uh, 37mm uh, which was okay uh, during World War One. Um, you know it was enough to punch through sort of thin steel armour but uh, you know things like the, the British two pounder was basically a 37mm the French also had something similar to a 37mm uh, the Germans also had something similar to a 37mm, but then as tank armour got thicker and uh, you know, stuff like the 6 pounder and the 76mm, the 88mm, um, things like that, you know, all that got put in, so the improvements to the T34 were kind of the same, you know, the guns got bigger, uh, the construction methods got simpler. The construction methods got simpler. More, you know, it wasn't a case of you know more bits got added on. I have absolutely no idea what this is for. Uh, yeah, it's, is it supposed to be a turret ring? Might actually be a turret ring. Hang on, let me see. Can I pull that off? Yeah, of course I can pull it off. I didn't glue it on. Uh, could actually, yeah, could actually. Oh, it's got a weird. I'm not sure. Let's. Uh, this is one of those mystery parts because it's not actually shown in the in the diagram. There is a ring around there. However, this does not look like that. So I'm not percent sure there. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, but yeah, the uh, the the T3476 um, was the kind of standard for a while. In, T, in T34 manufacture until they came up with the, the T3485 which like I say replaced the uh, this kind of flat thing yeah it's like I say you know the commander could stick his head out there to have a look around see if there was any enemy tanks coming and uh, if there was a German sniper or something watching he would probably get his head blown off uh, which isn't good uh, it, okay that's weird that does actually fit in there but there's like a weird sort of a weird sort of step. Yeah, it fits it fits there quite nicely, but there is a weird a weird kind of step in it. And uh, oh yeah, right. We'll stick that on there. There's a, a small step in the uh, the bottom of the turret as well. So does it go on that way around? Let me just pop it in the top. Yeah, this is one of those bits where it's like you know you're trying to figure things out. It's like right, you put the turret on and it sits nicely when these two pieces are mated together uh, but then unless you're supposed to glue that to the base of the turret yeah I think that's what you're supposed to do yeah right let's do that whether that's right or not I don't know because it like I say it doesn't show me in the instructions but yeah 
Yeah. So yeah, command of a, a T thirty four seventy six would be didn't have any kind of uh, optics or anything like that. He couldn't take a look out of uh, Coppola. Uh, he just had to uh, lift the top hatch, stick his head out, and hope that nobody nobody was watching. And uh, if he was very very lucky, he wouldn't get his head blown off. So pop that back in there. Oh yeah, that's yeah. Yeah, I think that's how it's supposed to go, even though it doesn't say that in the instructions. Uh, yeah, so uh, we've got some other little bits here on the sprue. We've got like uh, uh, fuel tanks to the side. We've got what appear to be some sort of uh, place to attach towing chains and some little vent covers. Um, I'll stick those on off camera. Oh, we've got some little uh, little headlamps as well. Is that a headlamp or a little search lamp or something like that? So I'm going to put those on off camera, uh, but that's the basic build done. Very quick, very nice, and uh, you know, we'll give it a, an undercoat. 20 minutes later. There we go. It's uh, it's done. It's done. Um, I decided in the end to, you know, to, you know, not, not do anything too fancy. Um, the base, uh, well, I'll just start off with a base coat of, uh, you know, just grey primer. And then over the top, I put some uh, olive drab, uh, about two coats of olive drab, just to get the colour in, and uh, then gave it a, a black wash all over, and uh, then just dry brushed a little bit of olive drab here and there, just to kind of highlight bits and bobs of it. And then the, uh, oh, we go, hang on, let's see if we can get it out of the glare. Oh uh, yeah, and then the uh, Soviet star uh, I had left over from doing something else on uh, the turret. Uh, I just decided basically to try and make this like a uh, you know kind of fresh from the factory type deal um, tracks I just left him black um, but yeah there, there we go the I did have a look at uh, sort of camo schemes for it um, but the, the Russian camo schemes w weren't weren't very interesting to be honest so I just decided to go with the you know a nice sort of basic um, you know, just the basic one there. I mean, the uh, the the T thirty four seventy six was uh, basically the the main tank of the, the the Russian army. They were still making them, and uh, you know, until they they phased them out in favor of the uh, the T thirty four eighty five with the eighty five millimeter gun instead of the seventy six millimeter gun that we've got here. And uh, so yeah, it's uh, yeah. It's not. It's all right. It's a nice kit, anyway. At least, even if the uh, <laughs> the little instruction sheet isn't uh, very, you know, isn't very informative in some places. But uh, yeah. So, thanks for watching this far. You know, uh, like, comment, subscribe, and all that good stuff. Um, you know, have a look at my put uh, my page on Facebook, which is linked below. And uh, what'll follow, as usual, is just some close-up pics of, of this because this camera is rubbish and can't do proper close-ups uh, do some close-up pics and uh, yeah so yeah thank you for watching again and uh, we'll see you next time